There's something in the air. The Chicago Bulls coming this fall to Chicago's very own Channel 9. Ball game moving into the sixth inning. With Steve Stone, Artie Harris, Harry Carey, this is Dwayne Stance from Olympic Stadium. Marvell Wynn, the top of the Cub batting order, will lead it off. It's going to be Wynn, Brian Sandberg, and then Dwight Smith. With the Cubs leading here, 1 0. Wynn has bounced to short and a third. Martinez delivers and misses on the first one. Ball one. Martinez has struck out five and walked one. Third time through the order, and the Cubs should know exactly how Dennis Martinez's fastball is working and his breaking ball and what to lay off of. So let's see if they can give Maddox a little insurance here, put a little daylight between themselves and the Expos, but make things a lot easier going into the final innings of this one. Two and all, the Pirates leading the St. Louis Ball Club. Four to one, they're in the bottom of the eighth. Three Pirates more over the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cubs magic number two starting the night. Three and all, the count. Ken Daly starting the eighth inning. The St. Louis down to their final three outs. in this count three nothing Martinez has three decisions against the Cubs this year he is two and one he beat Scott Sanderson three to two back in April and shut out Sanderson five nothing in June he throws a strike it's three and one and then lost to the Cubs in August Mike Balecki beat him four to two Balecki scheduled a pitch tomorrow night for the Cubs the Expos are undecided. There's a strike when trying to coax the walk out of Dutch Renard. But Renard won't go for it, and the count is full. The only walk that Martinez has issued tonight wound up turning into a run in the second inning. Dunstan grounded into a force out. Salazar was a man he walked, and Dunstan scored the run. High ball back into center, and Grissom. Under it, Marquise Grissom makes the catch. One out in the sixth. I think the Expo pitchers all have the same complaint, really, and that's lack of support by the offense. This was a team, when you looked up and down their lineup, you figured they'd score a lot of runs. It hasn't worked out that way, and that's put even more pressure on a very good starting rotation. Their problem has been in middle relief, but that's been solved a lot by the addition of Zane Smith. The offense just has not come alive for Montreal. Right now, nothing of two. He lines this one into deep left. That ball is off the wall. Extra bases. Sandberg digging for two, and he's going to make it. A double for Sandberg, his 25th of the year. Ryan Sandberg with a solid line drive gives the Cubs a chance to pick up another run. It's a shame he didn't get this ball up a little higher because it's a rocket over the head of Reigns. He can do nothing but wait for the carom off the wall and Rhino in at second base easily. He hit that ball right on the nose. Now Dwight Smith, who picked up an infield, hit his first time up there, one out of two. Up with a chance to add to the Cub lead. It's a one-run ball game. Hitless last night in the first game of this series, 0 for 3 before he was lifted for a pinch hitter. He has been swinging a very hot bat coming into this game, nine of his last 15. And he takes ball one. They've tried to do everything with Smith. For a while, they kept throwing him low breaking balls, then he adjusted to that. They started trying to jam him, and he opened up a little more quickly and adjusted to that. And he's shown that he can adjust from a bat to a bat, which is most unusual for a young hitter. 
That's what's kept him right around the 320 mark. He's in over 450 for the last three weeks. The count is one ball, one strike. That time, Dennis Martinez did to him exactly what Greg Maddox did to Tim Raines to get out of that fifth inning, and that was throw a good straight change. Maddox couldn't have picked a better time for his first straight change of the night, and he completely fooled Raines, who tapped out easily. 1-1 one, one to count. Comes back for the fastball following the change, and now the count's one and two. I would think he'd go with another high fastball tight. Let's see what Dennis has in mind. The ball, two strikes. <laughs> missed away. And the count is 2-2. Dennis was viewed by Earl Weaver as the next Jim Palmer in his early days with Baltimore. They were very patient with him, but eventually they gave up. He had some personal problems. He's over those now. And realizing that great potential he always had with the Orioles. A 2-2. Looper into left. That's going to fall for a base hit. A big AstroTurf hop. And Sandberg will score to make it a 2-0 ball game. Smith drops a single in front of Reigns and left. And the Cubs pick up their second run. RBI number 51 for Smith. Jim Fry, to our left, was yelling base hit all the way, hoping that Sandberg would take off. He didn't have to hurry all that much because when it hit the artificial surface, it bounced way high over the head of Reigns, and Dwight Smith has come through again. Now the Cubs are trying to finish this thing tonight. Picking up another run in the sixth. And here's Mark Grace. Grace 0 for 2. Out, but the Cubs are running. Here's that base hit. It's another straight change by Dennis Martinez, only this time Dwight Smith hits it just hard enough to dump it into left field. A ball, no strikes. Grace back in. Two and oh. His breaking ball has not been very good in this inning. He's only thrown it a few times, but has not been very sharp with it. He's only completed four games this year, and that's cause for concern because if an Expo starter doesn't get into the eighth inning, they've got to turn it over to middle relief, and that's been suspect for them. They've got Tim Burke, a great stopper, as we saw last night. If you don't get the game to him, they've got problems. Back in at first. Smith, nine out of 12 in the steel department. A two ball, no strike count on Grace. A run home in the sixth. A double by Sandberg and the single by Smith. And Grace out in front. Snap throw to first. One hops in. Conoraga flags it down. Now the count's two and one. We've seen that change up this inning more than the breaking ball. I think he realizes that a little something is off the curveball and he's gone to the straight change. Galarraga making a fine play. Andres, a candidate for the gold glove, has got 11 errors this year. Mark Grace with just six. And he's got a legitimate shot at the gold glove at first base. Squares out 2 2 here on Grace. Two runs, five hits off Martinez. The Cub dugout looking on. Will there be a little champagne in their future this evening? We'll know about Pittsburgh fairly soon. And then it'll be up to the Cubs to take care of business here under the dome. A 2 2 count to Grace. Smith back in. Well, if the Cubs do it, they're going to beat a pretty tough right-hander. And through five innings, he was extremely tough. The Cubs have a run off him in the sixth. He misses down and in. So we go to 
a 3-2. He just hasn't been able to throw the breaking ball for a strike when he can throw it. He's attempted to throw a couple of them that just didn't do anything. He got completely away from them. Now Dwight Smith is going to have to be very careful to watch the quick pickoff move. You got to figure Smith is going to be going. And the pitcher with a good move might try to catch him leaning the other way. Full count. Martinez setting up high and holding the ball for a long time. Waiting to see if Smith might give him a little indication and commit himself too soon. Dwayne, despite the fact that he sets up high, he still has to drop his hands to deliver the ball. And that's when the guy gets the extra step. And a throw to first, and Smith is back in. And that's what we talked about earlier. He has a quick move to first, but because he sets up so high, he does take a lot of time unloading the ball. That was a crafty move by Martinez. He stepped back off the mound which alert most hitters that the move is not coming and then quickly pours it over to first and Dwight Smith did a good job of getting back in Martinez with the quick feet on the mound Let's see if Grace can make a little contact on a double Smith is sure to score he's going and the three two lined up the right side but just foul Grace made a bid for an extra base hit and you can see it on his face and Dwight Smith was almost at second base by the time that ball just missed the chalk line. He would have scored easily. The call by Paul Rungy, he's straddling the line, and you see it just foul. So Smith returns to first, and Grace comes back to the batter's box. Two runs, five hits for the Cubs, no runs, three hits for the Expos. and a liner into right for a base hit. Brooks with a pickup. Smith's on his way to third to throw into second. So the Cubs have come up with three consecutive hits in the sixth inning. They have six hits in the game, half of them here in this frame. Grace at first with Smith at third and Dawson on his way to the plate. And the dugout starting to come alive. And they sense what's on the line here and they know they're getting closer with every base hit. Mark Grace doing the job takes that breaking ball and it's a good one from Martinez but early in the game it was breaking very sharply now it's starting to roll and when a curveball starts to roll a hitter sees it all the way and can judge just where to take that swing so Scott Sanderson looking at his former mates hoping they'll give way tonight and open it up for the championship for the Cubs Andre Dawson nothing of two 251 on the year with 21 home runs. Swing. He didn't mean to hit it back to second out there. First base two. They get the double play, and that retires the side. The ball came in on him. He didn't mean to hit it, but rolls into a double play, and the Cubs settle for a run in the frame. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Two nothing Cubs. Arby's presents unfried chicken. It's Arby's juicy roasted chicken topped with Swiss cheese, bacon, lettuce, and tomato on a toasted poppy seed roll. Taste the Arby's difference. Subscribe now for daily home delivery of the Chicago Tribune and you'll get Sundays free. Just call 1-800-221-1200 for 26 weeks of daily home delivery at just $2.10 a week. 26 weeks of the Chicago Tribune with Sundays free. That sounds like good news to me. Season after season, proper yard care is easy with supplies from True Value Hardware Stores. This fall, give your lawn healthy protection for the upcoming winter with Green Thumb Fall and Spring Lawn Food, just $4.88. Trim a tree's extra growth with these Green Thumb Lopping Shears, only $10.99. And get rid of pesky insects with your choice of Green Thumb Insect Killers. Just $2.66 each at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. Now, when you buy a set of Yokohamas, like the all-surface Super Digger 5, 
the high-performance A509. Or the off-road mud digger. You'll get a pair of Bosch fog lights free. Don't be left in the dark. See your participating dealer for details. When the going gets tough, the tough don't freeze up. And nobody's tougher than this one. Nobody. Maximum protection. Don't stop short of the peak. Marquis Grissom bounces the first pitch foul. Strike one. They're in the ninth. Cardinals batting in the top of the ninth with the Pirates leading four to one. It's Bill Landrum, the stopper for Pittsburgh, starting the ninth inning. And he's facing Ozzie Smith as we speak. A strike the count. And a little tap. Maddox down. Barehanded pick up and the throw. Not in time. And field hit. A great effort by Grissom. So Grissom is on with an infield hit for the second straight inning. The Expos have the leadoff man on. Fine effort by Maddox, who can't do anything with it. The try the jump pass and getting it there an eyelash too late. Grissom with great speed. Andres starting to hear the Boo Birds here in Montreal. They're disappointed with his 155 strikeouts this year. Andres Calaraga, the hitter, he is 0 for 2. He was called out on strikes in the first. Struck out swinging in the third inning. They call him the gentle giant. So far he's been the sleeping giant and the Cubs hoping that they don't wake him up because he's got great power. And a base hit in the right. Grissom will go to third as Dawson comes up with the ball. And the Expos come right back with back to back hits in the sixth inning. The Cubs picked up a run in the top half of this frame. Missed an opportunity on the double play, which ended the top of the sixth. Now a threat for the Expos. Andres goes the other way. The fastball was up from Maddox. And now you've got a man due up who's grounded into 15 double plays this year in Hubie Brooks. Brooks, like Galarraga, has struck out twice. Brooks... With nobody out, Tim Wallach will follow him. Big cut on the pitch in. Strike one. Ozzie Smith just hit a fly ball. He's gone. One gone. And Pedro Guerrero is up. Four to one. Pittsburgh leading the Cardinals in the ninth. Comes inside again for a ball this time. Austin Mocker and Wilkins throwing in the Cubs bullpen. 1-1 one, one to count. Inside. 2-1. and one. Cubs are leading 2 to nothing. Here in Montreal, the Pirates are leading the Cardinals 4-1. In Pittsburgh. Cubs will trade the double play for the run right here if they can get the ground ball off the bat of Brooks. He's going to go back inside with the fastball again. And a base hit out of the reach of Dunstan. Grissom scores to make it 2-1. to one. An RBI single for Brooks. Maddox got the pitch out over the plate. That shows he might be tiring some because he was getting everything inside earlier. And that ball high and out over the plate. RBI 66 for Hubie Brooks. Runners at first and second. Still nobody out. And Tim Wallach will be the hitter. Wallach, nothing out of two. So the difference in this game right now, the run scored with the Cubs in the top of the inning. Don Zimmer is on his way to the mound with the bullpen busy. Wilkins and Ossenmacher busy in the left field bullpen. Red's got a couple of his pitches up this inning and he's paid the price for it. And getting to the time of the year now where when you lose it, you lose it in a hurry because of some tired arms out there in the staff. Now he's explaining something to Maddox which means that 
He's going to leave him in the ball game. Probably still talking about the lead and the double play. Put everything else out of your mind and start with this hitter right here. In this case, Tim Wallach, who, like Hubie Brooks, is a good double play target. He's grounded into 20 of them this year, far and away leading his ball club in that department. So Zimmer. Is now departing after a long conversation out there before the Cubs pitched to Tim Wallach. When the Cubs clinched the division in 84, they did it in Pittsburgh. Rick Sutcliffe threw a two hitter, and the Cubs won that game 4 to 1. Right now, the Pirates are leading the Cardinals 4 to 1. The Pittsburgh victory would mean the Cubs have clinched at least a tie, and that coupled with a Cub victory tonight. Would clinch the division for the Cubs. Now, Wallach does not have a sacrifice, but he did talk with Jackie Moore. Let's see if he decides to try to lay one down. He's got 42 doubles this year, a whopping total. He leads the league in that department, as you might expect. The pitch is a ball. Some of those would have been triples for other players. He has. No triples. One ball, no strikes. Wallach has been playing with a bad knee. He missed a few games because of that. Maddox trying to get the first out of the sixth. And the pitch misses. Two and oh. There it is, a final. Final from Pittsburgh. The Pirates have beaten the Cardinals four to one, and the Cubs have clinched at least a tie. And now, if we're to celebrate tonight in Montreal, it's purely in the hands of the Cubs as they try to handle the Expos. The Pirates have beaten the Cardinals four to one. Todd Zeal hit into a double play to end that ball game, and the magic number is now one. And the tap foul. So the count. Two and one. There's something about that four to one score in Pittsburgh that the Cubs like. They use that score to clinch in 84 over Pittsburgh, and the Pirates have beaten the Cardinals tonight in Pittsburgh four to one to give the Cubs at least a tie. They're going to like it a lot more when they put it up on the board, and everybody in the dugout gets a look at it, as well as all the Cubs fans in attendance. So the count, two balls and a strike on Tim Wallach. Arnie has just told our cameraman down there, and he's running over to Zim, so they know. They're aware of that score by now. He's concerned trying to get the Cubs through the sixth now with a two-to-one lead. are going the pitch bounce toward third Salazar one play to first and the runners advance so the Expos by starting Brooks off first and Galarraga off second base stay away from a possible double play Wallach out third to first I would think you'd walk Foley in this situation take your chances on a double play with Santavania Foley's been so tough against the Cubs in this series that they're not going to take a chance with him he will get the intentional walk, the first given up by the Cub right-hander Greg Maddox tonight. So Foley, who hit a home run last night, had a couple hits, two runs scored, a couple runs batted in. Will not get a chance to swing the bat in this situation. And the Expo bullpen will go to work. Rich Thompson's going to start to throw as Nelson Sandelvania is the seventh hitter in the Expo lineup. So they're down toward the bottom end of the order, and Thompson starts to loosen. And how about this one? Bob Patterson, four and two this year, went eight innings against St. Louis. Bill Landrum coming on, picks up the save. Ken Hill was the loser. Landrum, save number 26. Here, Maddox faces the bases loaded with one out in Sandalvania. He's been on twice with a single reached on an error his last time. Hitting 
248 for the year. There's a ball. One and all the count. Maddox just not throwing the ball the same way he threw it in the early innings. Starting to try to aim it. When you do that, it's very difficult to throw strikes. One ball, no strikes. have got a rock at third Brooks at second Foley at first with one out Santavania who hit the sacrifice fly in the ninth inning to tie up the ball game last night foul ball the count is two and one three straight hits open the inning comes put together three hits in the top of the frame Double play got Martinez out of that inning. Maddox hoping for the same here in the bottom of the sixth. Long time, and now Sandovania steps out. Spike Owen is on deck. Even six apiece. Cubs have been charged with the only error of the game. The 2 1. Fly ball into left center field. Well tagged. Went on the run to make the catch. Here's the tag by Galarraga at third. He will score, and this game is tied. Santavania, who delivered the sacrifice fly last night in the ninth inning, delivers one tonight in the sixth. That's his 31st run batted in. Maddox got the ball out over the plate again, and Nelson Santavania gave it a long ride. A fine play by Marvell Wynn. So Santavania doing the job once again, and the Cubs see their two run lead go by the boards. The other runners hold. Brooks at second and Foley at first. Here's Spike Owen. Owen officially 0 for 2. Pins busy. Rich Thompson. Thompson up. A ball, no strikes. Thompson's been up quite a while in the Expo bullpen. Ossenmacher and Wilkins have been up for quite a while in the Cub bullpen. Matter of fact, they've stopped throwing and now are watching the proceedings. A ball, no strikes. Martinez, Dennis Martinez on deck, but with that bullpen busy. He may or may not be around very long, depending upon what Maddox does here with Owen. And he pops him up. It's a foul ball now back fair, and Salazar makes the catch to retire the side. But the Expos score a couple. On three hits, they leave two. We're through six. Harry will be back in a moment. This game is tied 2-2. Two -two.